Hey everybody, welcome to Sound Bombing. I created this show for people who want to experience a radical, life-changing journey through the sounds of my diverse guests. I hope that each sound you hear on this show will strengthen your faith, encourage your dreams, and challenge you to awaken the greatness within you. Drop the bomb. Drop the bomb. We're going to drop the bomb. This is a journey into sound. A journey which along the way will bring to you new color, new dimension, new values, and a new experience. Good afternoon, good evening, whatever the time of the day is. You are here in the bomb shelter with your friend, Dr. Lamar Darnell Shields. Welcome to another exciting edition of Sound Bombing. And you know I'm always so honored that you decide to hang out with me. If you were here last week, you heard Victor Ferguson talk about health and wellness. We know that many of us have been sick during COVID. We're trying to keep our immune system strong by physically distancing ourselves one another. We talked about vegan diet. We talked about eating healthy. We talked about optimal health because that's what we do. On this show, we focus on brain hacks. How can we hack our brain to do some amazing things? And today is no different. So welcome, welcome, welcome back. I wanna give you some time to get settled because if you are old to the show, you know what we're about to do. We're about to do our three breaths. If you are new to the show, you, I'm letting you know right now, take your shoes off, put your feet on the solid foundation, the floor, the ground, sit up straight in your chair, put your palms on your laps and your palms facing up in the position of receiving, roll your shoulders back. And here we go. We're going to start with our first breath. Inhale. Hold it for three seconds. Exhale. Two more times. Inhale. Hold it for three seconds. Exhale. Now we're going to go deeper. We're going to make ourselves really, really big like a puffer fish. Inhale. Hold it for five seconds. Exhale. Bombers, what is that? What is that called? That is called the breath of life. We start out with the breath because I don't know what you were doing prior to listening to the show. You don't know what I was doing. So we want to clear the space and we want to invite some positive energy into the bomb shelter, into the sound bombing community. And so I'm excited today because we're going to talk about grief and trauma and loss. So you ready? Let's go. Grief, trauma, and loss can barrel into your life, wreck the world as you know it, and then leave you wondering how to put things back together. It's like an old relationship. Somebody who told you not to hook up with that girl or somebody who told you not to hook up with that guy and then all of a sudden they left and they you feel like you have been drained. All of you all should be familiar with this concept, grief, trauma, and loss because we are all dealing with COVID indirect or directly. But even before COVID, we've all dealt with some form of trauma. You know my good friend, my girl, Sky Berger out of Indiana. That's all she talks about is her work around trauma. And we've had her doing work across the country with us. But in the wreckage of disseminated opportunities, friends, careers, relationships, homes, we stand awash and we feel lost. And that's what Sky had talked about in her work, in her workshops. And so I'm very, very close to this conversation around trauma. But I also want to talk about the pain of grief. It can also disrupt your physical health, your mental health. You can lose sleep. You can lose your appetite, even losing your ability to think straight. These are normal reactions to loss. And the more significant the loss, the more intense the grief is. Naturally, these emotions can be difficult to deal with and can lead to a barrage of worry, anxiety, and stress as you worry about the future and how to discover the best path to move forward. Well, 
I am glad that you're here because if you're dealing with anything that I just referenced, but I know I am, our next guest, Edie Nathan, teaches you to dance with your grief. Did you hear what I said? Teaches you to dance with your grief, to know it's a way to know yourself, whether it is the loss of a loved one or the loss of a limb or the loss of life. Once you can connect with that, your soul offers the answer to relief. Edie has been doing this work all over the country. She's an author, she's a speaker, licensed therapist. She is an AASECT certified sex therapist, hypothermist, and certified EMDR practitioner with more than 20 years of experience. She practices in the great city of New York. So we send some prayers out to her because we know New York has been hit with the COVID pandemic in her expertise as a grief therapist. She interweaves her formal training as a psychotherapist with breath work and guided imagery, ritual and storytelling, things that you know I'm familiar with. In her book, It's Grief, The Dance of Self-Discovery Through Trauma and Loss, she examines the emotional and mysterious dimensions of this journey with clarity and transform grief into one of your greatest teachers. Edie, welcome to the Sound Bomber community. How are you? Oh, I'm, I'm really great. And thank you, Lamar, for having me on the show. And so how are you dealing personally with this freaking insane pandemic? This is crazy, isn't it? I mean, <laughs> yes. we could never have imagined what this was going to be like. And if anyone had told us, oh, you're going to be home, you're going to keep being home, you're going to isolate, you might lose your job, you might have to figure out who you are, like re, just reprogram your brain, you're, you may lose some people along the way, you're not going to be able to create a funeral for them. You're not going to be able to mourn for them the way that ritual, ritualistically you usually mourn. You're, you're going to lose friendships. You're going to gain friendships. If anybody told us that this is what we were going to be facing 10 months ago, I think people would have looked at us and said, you're nuts. Mm -hmm. And here we are. So, and that's kind. And so with that being said, I'm sure that you are super busy. I, you know, my producer sent me tons of stuff about you, a lot of readings, a lot of articles, talks, but I'm sure you are super busy. Before we get into your work, how are you taking care of yourself as you're pouring into others? I bring on some of the most high performing individuals in their field and their expertise. And I always, I'm always concerned about them because we're givers, we're givers, we're givers. And a lot of times we're pouring from an empty cup. So before we get into your work and why you decide to do this work, what are you doing to take care of yourself? It's such a good question. That self-care comes. It's funny. You did breath work. I do a lot of breath work. I'm very, very into making sure that I take in those deep breaths and maintaining ritual or finding new ritual. I find that rituals calm me. They soothe me. So that might be that every, every morning I wake up and I say a prayer, whatever that prayer is, it, it, it's personal to me. I find that I make sure that I make connections with it through at least three people every day because I already feel isolated. What can I do to overcome some of that isolation? And I've also been reading more than I usually read and then taking, taking what I've been learning and creating like a book club so that we're, sh we're sharing knowledge and it's outside of my sphere, so to speak. So the way, and exercise, walking. Walking exercises my brain, it exercises my body, and I get in touch with myself and also with nature. So how did you get into this body of work? What, what is your interest in this work? Why, you know, were there some things that happened to you at a very young age? Were there some, some individuals that, you know, that hurt you in the past? Did, was, was there a lot of loss around you in your own life? How did you, how did you get into this field? So yes to all of those you examples. You said all of the above on the <laughs> yes. exam. Yes. So not ABC, <laughs> check all of the above. <laughs> That's exactly right. So, you know, sometimes you can have one thing that happens to you, one trauma that happens, and it, it affects you for the rest of your life. Sometimes you're able to take that trauma and you're 
able to put it into a box and say, okay, you know what? I'm okay. I, I survived this. But eventually, if there are multiple traumas, multiple losses, the box can't hold them any longer. And when this box, my box, being a survivor of sexual abuse, being a survivor of bullying, actually having been extremely overweight and going through much of my life as a very big woman and then losing weight, that is, was also traumatic, and then losing a partner when I was in my early 20s. And a culmination of all of those losses made the box explode. And I realized there was no, nowhere to go, no one to talk to. You know, being in your 20s and losing someone you love, the response is, unfortunately, don't worry, you're young, honey. You're going to be fine. You're going to find somebody else, which is, does nothing. It absolutely, it's, it doesn't recognize or acknowledge the pain of that loss. And so often we say things carelessly that are ultimately very hurting. So I realized I need to do this. And it changed the trajectory of my life. I was going into the corporate world. I was going in, into, you know, training in the corporate world. And I, I just changed everything. And I said, I got to be a therapist and I got to talk about this. We've got to start having honest conversations about grief, loss, and trauma, and how they dance together. What are some things that you discovered about grief, trauma, and loss that you didn't know prior to coming into this field of work? That they can actually be your greatest ally. They can inform you about you, about what's possible, about what you can tolerate, about who you can become as a result of them. So the work that I do pays the life of my lost partner, it pays it forward. And, and he is in, in that work. Paul continues to, to get illuminated through the, being a giver. And it feels like it's not mine to give. It's just, it's within me. It's like the soul's work. And we find that people who've suffered major losses will often turn those losses into, into their own greatness. So I know somebody's out there listening and they're like, you know, I, like, I liked Edie before, but now she's talking about an ally, typically an ally is somebody that supports me through the process, an ally is somebody I can call on and say, hey, loan me a couple of dollars because I can't do X, Y, and Z. Can you unpack what do you mean when you say an ally? Because I think I have an idea, but I want to be real clear on what that actually means. Because you're not saying get over it. Like a friend of mine wrote a great book called Get Over It. And I think people took it the wrong way when she said get over it. She didn't say move on. She says, she didn't just say move on and, and forget about it. She says, get over that thing and move on and move and move into a new world, learn the lessons from it, and then become a new person. Break down what this concept of an ally is when it comes to grief, loss, and trauma. So an ally is also something that can make you smarter, better, kinder, mm -hmm. uh, more aware than you were before. So when you fight grief and you don't dance with it, 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 it becomes the 500 pound gorilla in the room. Who wants to dance with a gorilla? You got it. <laughs> no, I you got it. No. <laughs> I, don't want, I, I don't know anybody. I'll dance with somebody that's 500 pounds, but not a 500 pound gorilla. That's right. <laughs> you know, cause then you're, you're, you're really tangling with them. Yes. But like anxiety, if, if instead of fighting it, you invite it, just the inviting it in and saying, okay, let me look at you. Let me learn about you. It actually diminishes its power over you. And that's when it becomes a teacher. And I think of teachers, and maybe you do too, as allies. A good teacher, like I think of my good teachers and how some of their thoughts and ideas I still work with day after day, year after year, right? So grief is a teacher. It has made me think outside of my box. It, it, it is an ally because in a way I can rely on it to keep me straight. It, I can rely on it to teach me to listen and listen carefully and be aware of who's around me and to know that the people around me are hurting whether you've lost someone 
or where you, you've just experienced COVID or you're dealing with isolation or a job loss or you're a homeless person on the street, there's loss. And and, I'm, I'm so glad that you use the example of a teacher because I'm thinking about the teachers that I had in my life that I didn't like. And I want to pause right there because it's not about liking your allies. It's about learning to like them. It's about learning who they are in the process. It's, it's also about finding what works for you in that process. And I love that you use the metaphor uh, of a teacher as well as an ally. Cause I know that there's somebody, somebody that's listening out there and they're like an ally, you know, why would I want to, why would I want to, and we're going to talk about this concept of dance. Why would I want to dance with this gorilla when I can just kill the gorilla or go in a different room or anything like that. But I like that you use the example of a teacher because life is a great teacher. You know, it's teaching us quite a bit. With that being said, you talked about this, this metaphor of dancing. How is the dance of grief like the hero's journey or the shiro's journey? Shiro, I love that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so the dance is, you know, when we open our door, we don't want to meet grief for sure. We don't want to meet trauma. We don't want to meet loss. It's like, no, don't get, get away from me. I don't want to see you. I don't want you near me. Just get away. And that's kind of our ordinary selves. And the beginning of the hero Shiro journey is you're starting with your ordinary life. And then you meet something like trauma, which is uninvited, like grief, which is uninvited, like loss, which is uninvited. And the the, the, the depth of those feelings take you deep, deep into a cave. And that cave is where you meet yourself, where you meet the gorilla, where you have to kind of tear yourself apart and say, why am I here? What's going on? How come grief was at my door? How come I, I had to be sexually abused? What was going on? How did this happen? But then you start to learn, okay, well, this has made me a better person or now I can help others get through this or hmm, now I'm, I'm going to do something completely different in my life. And I never thought I would be able to do that, become an author or become a friend to someone who's homeless or, or just have an understanding that I never had before. And that then I take that, I take that movement and that darkness in the cave and I move out of it and I find out who my allies are. I find out who my enemies are. And then I go back into the ordinary world forever changed. And that is the hero Shiro journey. So I'm sitting in this cave and I'm loving the metaphor of the cave. The cave could be your house because of COVID. The cave can, the cave can be in prison, mentally or physically. The cave can be an abusive relationship. Edie, what should I be doing while I'm sitting in the cave and right next to me is grief, loss, and trauma. I want some simple techniques that my listeners could be, that can use, that are going through this right now. So they're sitting in the cave. I'm sitting in the cave right now. What should I be doing? First, the first thing I'd like you to do is imagine that there's someone or something sitting across from you. Who is it? What are they saying to you? Listen to them. Are they, are they wise women? Are they, are they the gorilla that you need to actually ask questions like, why are you here? What do I need to learn? H how come you needed to come in now? Mm. So have that, that conversation, or maybe the person sitting across from you is you, the part of you that needs to be loved the part of you that needs to be heard, that you've actually shut down and shut out. So that's a first thing that you can do while you're in the cave. You started today, and I gather all of your, your sessions here, yes. with breath work. Breathe in the cave. Our breathing is one of, uh, is one of the best best ways of getting in touch with our bodies. And when we're in trauma, when we're in loss, we're not touching, tapping into our bodies, into our souls, into the soul's work. And the other thing you can do while you're in the cave is understand that your brain is your greatest, one of your greatest allies. And what happens when the brain is in trauma is there are connections. I like to think of it kind of like an octopus. And we've got all of these, these octopi, like, like 
outcries of their limbs going all over the place and it's trauma. And what you want to do is change the thinking, change the thought from I can't do this to yes, I can, I am strong. And you're actually changing those neural connections. You're changing the limbic system. You're changing the way your brain is handling loss. I love how you talked about the brain. I'm so interested in that part of the body because it's so mysterious. Uh, it is so full of just a lot of things going on that's responsible for, for everything that we do. But I love that you said how you can, I always talk about brain hacks. There's some brain hacks that we could do. Like the brain is powerful, but it can definitely be hacked to convince yourself to do to do some other things. What do you say to people who are constantly hearing those voices over and over and over again? You're nothing. You're no good. You're black. You're Latina. You're Native American. You're a woman. You're a lesbian. You're gay. You're poor. You've been abused by your husband. You've been abused by all these partners. You're not going to make it. You're not going to graduate. You're not going to be a good mother. Oh, you're a foreigner. You speak another language. You had COVID. I need to stay away from you. Oh, you had a, you had a, you've been a victim of AIDS and abuse. So what are you going to do? So what are some things that you have that you can share with my listeners who are constantly hearing these things? So they're in the cave and they're doing those things, but somewhere along the line, they're hearing those echoes in the cave. You know how you make an echo like, hey, 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 and they're hearing over and over and over again. Well, the first thing is shut up, mm -hmm. which sounds funny, but mm -hmm. it, it, we don't. We actually let them keep coming. Mm -hmm. So we invite them in sometime, right? And sometimes we do because what we know is more comfortable than what we don't know. And what, if what we know are those negative messages, then at least we know them. We've been dancing with them for a real long time. We don't know how to dance with a kinder self. The other thing is actually a biofeedback exercise that's really, really simple. And it's, it's actually in my book where you put a rubber band around your wrist. And this is not an not to hurt yourself. You snap the rubber band and you say, stop it. And you change the thought from, mm, I'm black, I'm Latina, I'm, I've been abused, I'm not worth it. Those messages aren't yours. They were taught to you. So you snap the rubber band, you say, stop it. You imagine who taught them to you. You send that, the vision of that person or even those words away away. I like to think like you're sending it into the sky. And then what you imagine is something comes down from the sky like a star, but it's a positive thought. It's a changed thought or changed cognition. And again, this is a brain changer. And that thought is, you don't deserve that. You, you are loved. You are lovable. And these are the reasons you're lovable. You just did something kind or you're going to think kindly of yourself and your color doesn't matter. Your voice does. And I want the community, our, our bombers out there to know that this doesn't just happen in one day. This stuff, you have to create these rituals over and over again, because am I, correct me if I'm wrong, Edie, this stuff has been in our psyche for so long that we think that we can say, oh, get over it, oh, move on. And after we've been going through this years and years and years, Walk us through your practice again, because I know you're dealing with a lot of people. What are some things, what are some other things that you do with some of your clients as you work with them who are just stuck? They just keep coming to you and they just keep getting stuck and stuck and stuck. And they're like, you know, I've done this, but it's still, I'm still stuck. So there are wonderful techniques out there, some of which need to be guided with, you know, a therapist or a guide or a witness. So some, what I'm going to suggest may also need some, gu some guidance, okay? There's something called EMDR. I don't know if you've heard about this, but it's um, eye movement desensitization, and it goes on. What, what's important here is that it's actually, again, a, a, a brain changer. And what, what happens is you, you take a picture a negative picture, a picture that just just keeps coming back, like it, it, it won't stop, it's incessant. That picture might be of an accident or watching someone die or Columbine, you know, the survivors of Columbine, you know, this EMDR what was worked, they, they worked through much of their trauma using this technique. And 
if your listeners just look up EMDR, they can find, actually they can find it online and they can find um, an organization called EMDRIA, EMDRIA, and it, it's a wonderful way of helping people through trauma. I do it with myself because I know how to do it. And basically it's moving the eyes right to left, right to left in a very timed metered way. What they found is when you start with something negative and you begin to process it, that reprocessing, which is what the R stands for, the reprocessing actually allows your brain to reprocess the trauma and the way that you're holding the grief and helps you move through being stuck. Yeah, because we all, we all get stuck over and over again. And it's okay. It's okay. This is a learning process. I don't want my listeners to get discouraged and say, I've done this, I've done this. But again, we're talking years and years and years of abuse, abuse, self-inflicted, and then abuse from other individuals. What are, the, what are some of the negative outcomes of trauma, grief, and loss when you don't deal with it, when you just sort of push it to the side? There are so many negative outcomes, sleeplessness, overeating, not eating, self-harm, as you just spoke of, you know, the self-harm is a way, it, it really doesn't hurt the, it doesn't hurt the way that, that we might imagine it hurts. It actually takes the pain away for so many, the emotional pain when there's self-harm and that self-harm can be cutting, it can be starvation, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and those are just a few examples. The other uh, relationships, uh, no desire for intimacy, no desire to even talk, share your life, starvation. Uh, also, there is this sense for people who are suffering is that they need to do it alone. They suffer in silence. And the more you suffer in silence, well, where does that lead? Anxiety, anxiety that then leads to perhaps phobias. A phobia is something where not only is there anxiety, but you fear it so much that you, you can't leave your home. The, the outside becomes dangerous. Dangerous in a way that's not real. I mean, it is dangerous out there and we have real concerns, especially right now. However, this is, this is not based in reality. It's based on something that you believe and that you have conjured. And also when anxiety is, uh, is really dealt with, what you will find on the other side of anxiety is anger. And the best way to deal with your anxiety is to understand where is my anger. So when anger builds and it turns into rage, the rage can get internalized or the rage can get externalized. And with externalized anger, what do you do? Maybe you lash out, maybe you yell, maybe you holler, maybe you hit. And everything feels like it's out of control. So when things within the grief and trauma world are not heard by the self, those are some of the ways they uh, come out. Talk to me about the big G's and the little G's. In our research on you, we kept coming across that. What are the big G's and the little G's? So the big G's are loss of a loved one, loss of a home, loss of a job, loss of a limb, mm -hmm. uh, being a, a caretaker. A lot, a lot of people now are caretakers and losing yes. the role, right, of a caretaker. The little G's are those li little disappointments in life that mm, we just let roll over us, but we know that they're a disappointment. However, if they begin to build up and build up and build up and you don't pay attention, then guess what? They become a big G. So how does a sex therapist, Edie, go from being a sex therapist, I see you laughing, to then now focusing on grief. You know, that's the million dollar question. I was waiting for that for the last one. So you move from the sex therapist to then focus on grief, grief, loss, and trauma. How does well, that happen? Believe it or not, they're, <laughs> very, they're very married. <laughs> so you got to explain. I like that married sex. You need to be married when you're having some good sex. Uh, so explain that. How are they married? So when you deal with trauma and you deal with grief and loss, the area of one's life that is often most affected is your sex life 
and your se- your sense of 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 sexuality sensuality you may withhold or actually you may become over sexualized mm. and get to a place of out of control sexual behavior some people call it sex sexual addiction that's that's not where uh, i've been taught and there's a, there's a lot on out of control sexual behavior which is really about anxiety so I kind of feel like I can't talk about grief and trauma with also bringing in um, the sexual component and how when we repress ourselves, when we don't acknowledge perhaps our desire to, um, to explore our own sexuality and our own sensuality, especially right now, like who am I and where do I fit in? Am I part of the LGBTQ community and what does that mean? do I want to transition? And there's a lot of grief around people who may want to explore um, transitioning and being more who they have always felt themselves to be. So when I look at grief and loss and trauma, I'm looking at it from uh, multiple levels and angles. So I see you comprise all of your years of, of, of teaching, engaging workshops for lectures into a book uh, called It's Grief, The Dance of Self-Discovery Through Trauma and Loss. What should our listeners expect from reading this book? And how can my listeners get, get uh, a copy of your book and get in contact with you? Okay. I always like to answer this question, what they shouldn't expect, okay. which is <laughs> how to. This is not a how-to book. It's a book of self-discovery. Are you, who are you in this grief process and how can you learn about yourself through it? Are you fixed? Are you mutable? Are you, are you more of a, an extrovert or an introvert or an ambivert? Because once you can assess who you are, then you will have a, an easier way of knowing how to get help. And no one really talks about that. What's the, based on who you are, what's the best help for you? So that's what they can expect. And there's also 11 phases and the phases, it's not that you go from A to B to C. There's no rhyme or reason to how we deal with grief and no one does it exactly the same way. So that's what, that's a takeaway. They can find it on Amazon or, or they can come directly to me at at my website, edynathan.com. And if they mention this show, when they, if they sign up for a newsletter and they mention that they heard me here, I will send them a free chapter from the book, The 11 Phases of Grief. All right. So Edie, it was a pleasure talking to you. I can talk to you forever. First of all, you have such a calming voice and I'm thinking about all the grief and death around me. So I really needed to hear this today. And I'm hoping that my listeners uh, needed it as well. And I'm hoping that they gained something. And I'm sure that they did. You know, got to pick up her book. It's Grief, the Dance of Self-Discovery Through Trauma and Loss. But before you leave, Edie, my favorite part of the show is called The Super Bomb Questions. And I'm going to ask you these questions and I need you to respond as quickly as possible. So you ready? Ready. All right. So here we go. What's your favorite word? Insistence. What's your favorite quote? You need to know your friends, but your enemies better. What's your superpower? Ritual. What's your spirit animal? Frogs. (laughs) Frogs. Okay. Um, What brings you to tears of joy? Watching someone heal. What brings you to tears of sorrow? Seeing my homeless woman on the street of New York, streets of New York. What do you wish you had more time to do? Read. What's the best or most worthwhile investment you've ever made it could be a investment of money time energy or anything believing in myself 
outside of your biological functions, what's your morning routine look like? You win the morning, you win the day. Pray. Wash my hands for clarity. Mm-hmm. And be thankful. If you won the Miss America talent competition, Edie Nathan, what would your talent be? Ceramics. <laughs> ah, the ceramic queen. Edie, thank you for joining me in the bomb shelter. It has been a pleasure talking to you. It has been a pleasure. Thank you so much, Lamar. And I want to thank my engineer, my Haitian brother, Alexander Blanc, my super duper producer, Nicole Klimpaka, and all of you for listening. Got to thank my theme music produced by Supremacy for his amazing beats. Make sure you subscribe. Check us out on all the platforms. Stop being stingy. Share me with your friends. If you want to check out my merchandise, go to drdrlds.com where I sell the Ubuntu shirts, the sound bombing hats. But also if you want to find out where I'm going to be. And as always, believe that something wonderful is about to happen. But some people miss the message because they're too busy looking for the mess. But not you. Thanks for tuning in. Go out and do something for someone other than yourself today. You've been listening to Sound Bombing. Peace. (laughs) 